um, I spoke about the elements of a press kit and why they matter. Well, today we're going to talk about the development and maintenance of target of media targets and list. And um, this is very important for your PR campaign for your companies. Uh, let's look at the three-step process of targeting the right people. Number one, identify media outlets reach your company's target audience. Number two, determining which editors, reporters, or these outlets will be interested in your company's news and information. And number three, getting your company's information into their hands in the right in the proper format. Now, protecting the media and the, the way media has changed in the last two years with so much content online that we certainly will address that today. But the, I will also go back to more traditional forms of publicity and um, traditional ways that we've also reached out to media and show you how those traditional ways also support our new ways of reaching the media. But first, just determine, number one, uh, which media outlets reach your company's target audience? What does your target, where, what does your target audience watch, read, listen to targeting the media? the media your media your target customers watch read or listen um, help focus your publicity dollars and energy so they are most effective for instance if you sell a product to teenagers a campaign might focus on specific types of radio stations but not necessarily like a weekly community newspaper maybe a weekly arts and entertainment newspaper Provide a service to homeowners in your community. You want to target the local newspaper, radio stations, and TV stations. Or if your customers are like trainees at a Fortune 1000 company, you'll want to reach them through trade magazines that they read. And I know publishers, you all understand that the target market, market for each one of your publications, of course, is very specific. So when also now reaching out to the media, let's find out where you're, where the media also, you approach it from a different direction. Just ask yourself, newspapers and magazines, who listens to the radio and when, and who watches TV news and talk shows? Um, I'm not going to say that I have hard stats right now because I think the figures are changing quickly about who watches MS, uh, the major cable news networks. How many viewerships have declined in the nightly network news viewerships? So I don't really want to address that so much, but I think that one thing that we all are sure of, that on a typical day, a majority of Americans are either are reading the newspaper, they're watching TV news, they're listening to radio news, they're logging on to the Internet for news from the beginning of the day until the late night hours. And it's been said that midday is the most common time to get the news, primarily from TV. Look at who the media decision makers are, whom to contact with your information about your company. So once you've determined which media you're targeting, and for instance, for me, um, if I'm working with a young rock band, we have uh, 101X Rock here in Austin. Well, of course, I'm going to send my um, set up possible interviews on that format of, of radio. Um, so once you start determine which media you're tar targeting, let's now identify the deci decision makers at each outlet media gatekeepers. They have job titles, but their mission is the same, to determine what goes into print or over the airways. I'll explain to you who you know at each one of these types of media outlets, and as, as of course your editorial staff, you have a very 
clear awareness of who in your editorial staff and how they should appropriately be approached. But let's look at this from a, a general view of all our different media outlets and who are the different gatekeepers at each one of them. Let's look at television stations. Um, I'm on publicity efforts that when I have TV coverage, and for goodness sakes, I'm here in Austin, Texas. We're not like a Chicago uh, DMA. We're not like a Dallas. We're not like, in, by any means, New York. We have a smaller TV viewership for the overall United States, but it's very effective regionally when we have each placed on TV for our re our viewers. Very effective. TV's reaches so many people that are it's a diverse audience, and you can bring in so many new new um, people where new awareness of your company. So a local station, there's typically a daytime assignment editor, a nighttime assignment assignment editor can assignment editor. The assignment editor you send your information to is determined by the time of day or the day of the week that you want your news coverage. Some that are real specialized uh, in their TV news reporting, for instance, reporters, uh, there might be a health or sports reporting. Many, there's maybe political and entertainment reporting. So if you have health-related or sports story or news about another topic that you know a specific reporter has a special interest in, you'd want to send your news to those individuals. If you think it's newsworthy, they will get buy-in from the assignment editor if they think it's newsworthy. So you might want to definitely research your specific reporters in addition to your assignment editors. Contact at local television stations for talk shows is the show's producer. And here in Austin, and in many, many network affiliates, air news and entertainment programs in the morning uh, before the Today NBC, Good Morning America, ABC, or the early show, CBS. And these local vision show stations, talk shows, often include in-studio and on-location interviews that showcase special events of the day or offer early morning viewer timely advice. And contact the television stations, and that would be the Public Affairs Program Director uh, for the PSAs. And some of the stations still provide limited opportunities for small businesses uh, to educate the public or help shape public opinion with um, producing affairs programs. Radio stations. Your call for radio news is the news director. Radio stations have short newscasts, so be very selective about the information you give them. And honestly, unless you have something earth-shattering, very tightly, or incredibly interested, you'll have difficulty getting radio news exposure. Um, I've been fortunate to work on projects that might involve a vote from the city council. It might involve a large medical entity getting involved. And I've been very lucky to be able to get news stories and sound bites uh, as part of uh, as uh, radio exposures for my clients. Tag for the morning or afternoon radio drive time program is the producer for the show, who may also be the host. And the most popular radio in each market typically have a drive time program with very colorful host. And here we have one show that um, KLJ FM, the Dudley and Bob show. And they do short interviews by phone or have in-studio guests. And they might have local and national guests or experts and celebrities. And they're good targets when you have fun or interesting information to share. And they are also receptive to, receptive to free samples. And I know it's changing more and you can't just offer up something free and get the coverage. But in the past, it has been effective. For instance, when a juice company introduces a line of 
fresh fruit beverages. Um, you might use a messenger, even wearing a costume, let's say an Apple costume, to deliver the product samples to select morning drive time program host. And sometimes that oversized piece of fruit will get in the door, and sometimes having that free juice will give you pop airtime with the host tasting the juice and commenting. commenting. And, of course, I've found um, these morning radio hosts are very open if it's a uh, an event that is a nonprofit. Proceeds go to a nonprofit. Let's see our contact for talk shows on talk radio and each show's uh, is each show's producer, and talk radio is enormously popular, and producers need a steady influx of guests bearing information to keep these programs on the air. Your radio public affairs interview programs is the public affairs directors. And uh, again, some of these stations will offer 30 to 60-minute public affair announcements. And then only a few now have these longer program shows that are public affairs. Um, is offer producer experts on the project and provide contact information for these people as well so that they will have sources to um, give their listeners for information. are all, of course, efforts at. Um, your consumer magazine contact would be an editor of the section where your news or information belongs. If you're offering a booklet to readers, you would want to send the information to the editor of that section that uses this type of in information. Magazines, as you know, have some kind of news sec section. Send relevant news to the section editor. If you're pitching an article idea, you might contact the articles editor. But if it's health-related uh, and there's a health editor or reporter, pitch it him or her. Uh, likewise, your contact at a trade magazine is the editor of the section where your news or information belongs. Uh, many magazines have news editors who should receive your press releases. Some even have new product editors. And when offering a written when a bylined article or a case study or when suggesting an article idea, contact the editor. Contact for the online version of a print publication, both trade and consumer, the online editor. And I know we all understand this, but it's. Uh, uh, I just want to make a note that it's not always the webmaster who is frequently just a behind the scenes and is not the individual who actually determines what content is posted and what isn't. Our daily and arts and entertainment newspapers. Um, sections of the, of the newspaper, local, lifestyle, business, sports, etc., have individual editors. And these also have reporters that specialize in top or beats. The local section of a daily newspaper typically has a reporter who follows education, for example. On a paper, that might be her assignment. Paper, she probably has other beats as well. Uh, similarly, the lifestyle or living section has reporters specializing in food, entertainment, and so on. Metropolitan daily newspapers have editors for these topics as well. Business section report, reporters focus on small business topics, workplace issues, technologies, and other areas of interest or companies that are unique to, to your community. Um, for all sections, you can cont contact either reporters or editors. Identify the appropriate reporters, start there. If you can contact the section editor who will know the best reporters to assign to your story if it's of interest. Our small weekly newspapers, and we know they have editors and reporters, 
and um, they do also now have online content editors. And my experience with the smaller weekly newspapers is that um, many times if I want a well-written AP style press release, that uh, many times they will just use it as is, content exactly as it's sent, and copy and pasting uh, into that uh, into the into to be printed, and that's a great way to stay on target with your messaging. So let's go back and look up go television stations, and let's go over quickly just a quick review. Uh, and I'm just going to give you some points of words again about these different gatekeepers, so we can just review what I just said. Let's look television stations directors. Them is to invite them to VIP events, and we certainly will talk, touch on that. Assignment editors at TV stations. If you know who to contact? This should be your first choice. Again, morning and or noon producers. These are the people who book guests and determine if the station will cover your story or interview during the daytime newscast. Meteor meteorologist. Sometimes they announce events before or after their segment, and often when their station is a sponsor. And I had good luck with meteorologists. If they have something they love, like music or sports, they will actually come on site um, if they feel the event is something that they really want their viewers to know about and do a live new, uh, weather broadcast on site from the event. And that's very exciting to be on um, to have that on-site live uh, weather meteorologist there. Public service announcer, announcement PSA directors. These people are usually the community relation directors as well. They typically develop the schedule for airing PSAs. At TV stations are specific reporters and photojournalists. And yes, many times the TV station will send only the photographer, the photojournalist out, shoot what we call B-roll and take it back to the station, and the anchor of the news will then fill in from the press release that we've create, created, the voiceover, to intro the segment that would be what the journalist has shot and edited. And then the voiceover or the announcer will be the anchor or the host back at the station. So photo editor, photo journalists are very important to um, contact or be aware of, that they are a good source of a contact at a TV station. And um, the reporter, the best um, cover you can get is when the reporter and the photo journalist comes out. So you actually have the reporter um, either act it's a live shot or creating a news story, and the photojournalist is there to assist and shoot the B-roll. So that makes a wonderful package. And then our, our last person at the TV in, in our, um, uh, TV, of course, the online content editors. Um, important now, um, not only to get the coverage in advance, but once you've gotten the coverage, many times these contact uh, content editors will allow your company to link to the, new, to the news outlets, to the TV station's website, and, um, and have that coverage for your, uh, linked over to your website for future clips or to show the coverage that you've gotten. And I want the TV stations, we certainly would want to have the anchors that anchor those morning or, or news shows and the news anchors for the news shows on our list. And many of them have specific interest. And they are nice, they are nice uh, and really appreciate their nice outlet to invite to VIP events. Looking at regulations, a quick review. We want to co contact our news directors. Reporters usually available or necessary on stations that are formatted for news, talk shows, producers, and our host. 
and then our contact editors, content, online content editors. They're quite a huge part of television now, and um, I know for a fact that I've worked with online television content editors and even set up ticket giveaways and uh, product giveaways and special um, uh, images. So they are looking for ways of always to drive um, people to the website. And if you can offer ticket giveaways, your event has a lot of clout, they appreciate that linking to your website and also um, ways to drive more interest around your event. Magazines, of course, we have the editors. Editors and I work a lot with photo editors because we all know once the courage has been placed, then getting the right art to go with it can take several um, sending back and forth, finding the right dimensions. We always want the 300 DPI uh, dots per inch for the best location of the digital art. Other uh, editors and reporters are very important um, when a public. 30,000 circulation, and we know that even more people read that, and you have a prominent or calendar listing, and that drops at the first of the month, then you're going to get a lot of brand recognition off your by being part of that calendar uh, listing. Community editors and reporters, and we know they're looking for stories uh, for their readers, and specific Reporters that cover your company sector, and always the online content editors are very important. Lastly, at daily newspapers, and we can also include arts and entertainment newspapers, we're going to have the section editors, which would be Metro Business Lifestyle. We want community profit editors as an outlet for servicing our information. Again, the photo editors are very important. And I have my, my experience is that I've gotten photo coverage uh, and maybe not a lot of ink from reporter about an event, but the photo coverage with the photo caption um, is a wonderful way to recap an event, spread the, uh, the brand awareness, and um, get great exposure for your company and your company's event. Editors and writers, for those topic issue to address, and uh, we just got an op-ed from one of my clients and was in a section, of course, opposite the editorial, and there's a section in our Austin American Statesman that allows for letters from contributors. So my clients and I created a um, and service to the uh, editor our letter of contribution, and they ran the letter as is and gave and gave the byline the contribution. Uh, they gave the byline to the two people from the organization that wrote the letter. So that's a great way to get your message out, and they and they as you send it. And their biggest restraint, of course, is they get a lot of those, so that you want to have a strong why, and then you don't want them to be too long. They sure want those less than 750 words and sometimes 500 words. Uh, for me, an entertainment publicist, these specific lifestyle and metro reporters are very important for me and my clients, and perhaps for you and your company. Travel editors and reporters are also a great outlet at daily newspapers, um, especially for newspapers outside your market. Characters and reporters, again, are very important. Humorist and columnist, and here in Austin we have a humorist named John Kelso, and his column is actually a syndicated, uh, runs in other Cox-owned newspapers, our newspapers owned by Cox. So that's a great outlet because you'll get into other markets. So he'll be very particular what he covers, but um, please keep him in mind because they're very, very important uh, for getting about, out about your company. Society columnists are important. 
especially when you're planning a fundraiser or VIP event, communication editors and reporters, especially if you're developing programming designed to educate children on a particular topic, and as I mentioned before, online content editors, and then newspapers, they're going to be small. Uh, they have very small staffs, and the best place to send the information is to the editor, and they will pass that on. And, of course, the online content editor is very important at the small newspapers. I'm back and forth about how to determine who these people are, back and forth in the sense that there's many ways that you can find out who the different reporters are, of course. There's media directories. News reporting business has a high turnover, and reporters change beats, and this is very typical. So you just need to keep up with your media. We'll talk about how to do that. And um, one response from my seminar was about making phone calls to newspapers and being an author. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but um, we must newspapers, but we must be aware, of course, that media gets hundreds of requests for coverage on a, on a weekly, if not daily basis, and subjectionists in newsrooms are absolutely not allowed to give out direct contact information, such as direct phone numbers and email addresses. To connect to the reporter, you need to contact, and then it's up to the reporter to provide that information. But I'm going to talk in a moment about how we are going to send this information and what is really accepted, acceptable these days. So you use um, calling um, to the media and bothering them with a lot of phone calls. And because we've got the website, and all major media outlets are going to have their website with their contact information there for you. Uh, for the editors, that's a great help. Um, it used to be different. I want to talk now about how we do con how we do compile a media list. We're going to go to different elements of the database, and I'm going to provide a template for you. But I just want to talk about compiling a database very quickly. An accurate and com comprehensive media list is the backbone of your company's publicity campaign. And we know at Colling it takes time, effort, and research, but it's not hard work. It just takes focus, and it, you need to know what you're looking for. And resources to use to develop your list, and they will depend on the scope of your project. Um, one option would be to compile your list completely internally. And this works best when your list is small or very specialized. Number two, you can use media directories to compile a list that you maintain and update internally. Directories are available for purchase, and there might still be some available at the public um, uh, public library reference books. You can find these lists there. And you can use one of many companies that publishes media directories to maintain, generate your list for you. And this is cost effective if your list is really large. So if you're contacting local me media only, you can compile your list quickly with just a couple of issues of the daily newspapers and going online. And before we could go online and look at, at uh names of reporters and editors, I used to even go to the yellow pages just to get the basic addresses, phone numbers for radio and television stations. Then for the names of your radio news directors and TV news assignment editors, but you will be able to find most of this information online now. Uh, all, practically all media outlets do have a strong web presence for their publication. Uh, of course, the least expensive way to develop a targeted list, um, a target or consumer magazine database, is to get copies of many of the targeted publications if possible and use these mastheads, the 
names of the staff by job titles and, uh, to identify the appropriate editors. And again, publication websites are going to be an asset um, for um, identifying the magazine's uh, editors. Of media directories uh, available as books or CD-ROM databases to help you compile your list. And you can spend anything from hundreds of dollars for a directory listening daily and weekly newspapers to thousands of dollars for sets of media di directories covering most media outlets. And one resource um, up into its online media source to generate and maintain a media database Charges starting at more, and, I, and it truly is 2,500 or more. Uh, it's better suited for um, this is better suited for a large public relations agency managing any publicity programs, maybe rather than a small business um, its own publicity. So most all businesses will work from the same media list all year, and while, and you must keep it updated. Uh, because there's a huge personnel turnover in our this industry, as we know. Um, one way to keep up with the turnover is to read the magazines and go online and look at the different uh, ma uh, content listed online for the publications. Uh, we have used in the past uh, affordable, and, and it's... Um, Actually, affordable release dis distribution services available from some co such companies as Biswire, Billboard Newswire, and PR Newswire. These organi organizations will generate, store, and update uh, your optimized media database for a fee. They also re reproduce distribute your press releases. Price for this service, uh, but it certainly is a manageable way to keep your list current. So let's look at this um, screen that I have here: the elements of a database. So once we get, we've um, get, it's time to develop a database. I suggest. A software package and many computer. There's many computer software packages that make it easier. A Pro software is what I use, and it's been very effective because you all have a main page. You can create mails. You can search and find information um, from around the country. Uh, since we're national, we organize ours by zip code, but it's been very. And, and then we can go in and do a sir. I find we can find everyone in a certain city with the last name Walker that's in our database. So it's a very uh, the FileMaker and many other database software programs are very are very important way to maintain your media list. Let's look at the elements of the database. The categories that should be included in a database include the name of the media outlet, like the Austin American Statesman, like I mentioned, KLBJ FM, um, Research.com. You'd want the name of the contact, first, first name, position, editor, assignment editor, community writer. You'd want address, a mailing address, like a PO box number. And a street, of course, if you were doing a special delivery. The phone numbers, the main phone number, newsroom, direct, and all diff phone numbers, which could even be home, mobile, pager, uh, whatever the contact feels comfortable sharing with you, uh, particularly when it's this alternative personal uh, information uh, that's not directly to the media outlet. A fax line number, main and direct, an email address, a web address, and good to know deadlines, the last day and time that a media outlet can receive information for your story, which varies greatly between media outlets. The 
question? Or date or time, the date available for the mass public. Park it. For instance, if you're in Dallas, the suburb of Dallas is Plano, so you would want to include Plano in your Dallas Fort Worth media list. You want particular projects. You might you most likely will not send each announcement to the same set of media and adding a particular code for each project, you can perform a search for just that code and pull all the required media at one time. Notes include items for future use like does not like to receive news releases by email. And they're absolutely people that only want, still want, and we find that in major television, they want it by mail or faxes. It makes it more re, uh, real to them because they get so many email pitches. Or the best time to call the, the media. Or this reporter does not attend the, did, not, did not attend the fundraiser but asked to be included for feature announcements. You want to, you want to, on your dash, you'd want data nerd and data updated. And this information can usually be added to each media record automatically using the right software. It's a good way to see if and when you need your, to update this. And ratings. And this information is important for summary reports that show your publicity success. And I want to add real quickly before we look at the template uh, in place. Um, that backup is a vital word for you and whoever's keeping your your base at your company, whether it's paper or disk. And of course, now we even have a hard drive gadget that we download and keep our backup our database on. It's just very important that you have all your database backed up uh, because if there was a crash to your hard drive or if any files get destroyed by mistake, which happens, um, that's a really big problem if you're in the middle of a big campaign and ready to serve the media and now you can't get to the list. So that's very important that you have it backed up. And I'll mention very quickly that we mustn't forget college publications because they're college newspaper and radio stations, and they represent um, – um, if that's your audience, then you certainly want to include – your target audience, you certainly want to include them in your um, in your days. Now, I'm going to show you an, a screen save of the McGuckin PR database. And you'll see on the left, this is a FileMaker layout. And they allow so many different ways to find a record. Uh, we be front page, the main page, uh, and it's of me, of course. And you see that our total um, database is close, is over 11,000 people, and it's unsorted. Uh, as you see, it reads under browse down at the bottom. Like I said before, there's sorting options where you can sort it by just certain zip codes. I'm sorry, zip codes even. Area codes, even t telephone area codes, you can sort by publications. And let's look uh, at the category. I have publicists there, but under that category, we have television, radio. We have all our different categories of the different uh, elements of our database, so that we can find people, even if they're just other professionals. We have that category, professional contacts. So under this database. We've got entry date, first put in 10-129, the category. We put the source, and we have it, uh, our, it, that would be a drop down, and it would show different people at the company, whoever put it in, the sex, the last date modified, first name, name company name, addresses, city, phone numbers, faxes, emails, uh, reports to, so I can do a confine, I can find everyone that could try, Reports to MEPR10. We're always on deadline. I'm the owner. Website. Let's say our circulation's a middle. Uh, that's under our comments or note, notes. Then under material sent, we'll fill in. We can put a date and we can code it to um, which client we sent what kind of information to. We can then put a call date when we called and then the response of the media. So it's a. This is a great way to organize uh, your database, and it's FileMaker Pro, and this is what we would call the template for 
um, putting in our database. Now, we've got our database. Let's look now at mental relationship building. Okay. Relationships with the media are important. But don't, in any circumstance, let your lack of relationship stop you from contacting them with your story. An existing relationship with a reporter can open doors, but the doors are rarely closed to strangers like us or like you who have a good story to tell. If you're pitting the right person with a good story idea, you will get a chance to be heard effort to identify the most important contacts on your media list and cultivate relationships with these individuals. With these individuals. Do this in the same way you maintain relationships with other business contacts. Being helpful and a good resource. Information you send them about your company is truly useful and relevant. For instance, don't send a personnel release to the to business week to a business week reporter who covers your industry because he probably won't use it and it serves no background information purpose i want a few tips for uh good good working rate good work relationships with the media so do as much work for the reporter as possible like when suggesting an article or talk show segment idea to radio or television, and names and numbers of each individual who can be interviewed on that topic. Provide background information and statistics. Remember, we want all of our information that we sent to have strong why and facts that back up that why the media would want their listeners, readers, viewers to know about our pitch. To save a reporter time will bring you closer to your goal uh, which is that interview or article. Help reporters do their jobs by sending revel relevant news items or suggesting article ideas. And these news items make trade magazines that they might not see. Article ideas don't need a connection to your business. This just helps establish you as a friend and resource, further developing that relationship. The FBI information you email to them uh, or drop it a hard copy in the mail might be useful, but it shows you have an understanding of their job and are trying to be helpful. Time for face-to-face -face contact. Whenever possible, take a key local reporter to lunch, even when you're not looking for media coverage. Ask questions about what he or she is currently working on and what he or she might be developing for the future. Can you open any doors for the reporter? Can you help the reporter do his or her job better? Trade media outlets are based in one city. Travel there and schedule a day of desk side briefing so you can provide useful background on your industry, your company, trends, projections, and so on. And also schedule meetings with writers and editors at trade shows. And I have actually done this. I've gone uh, early in my career to Houston, San Francisco, Dallas, and met with key entertainment, music entertain, uh, reporters and editors, and we still have a good relationship to these days, and these people were willing to meet with me, and they're open to what I send them now because we've established this good rapport, and I understand more what they need and what they're looking for. Now, it's very important, important to be available to the media and respond to inquiries quickly. So turning calls immediately is important because... Reporters and producers are usually walk, working against deadline, and they, if they don't hear back from you in a short period of time, they're going to move on to the next resource on the list, and you'll miss your opportunity for an interview. So at our office, when a media calls, that takes priority over anything we're working on, and if we're not even working on that project, everything drops until uh, drops aside until me or my staff can facilitate that media request, that inquiry or uh, request. Please, even if the call is to ask for your help to identifying a source 
for a story that has nothing to do with your company. If you don't have the information for them, tell them you'll get it and call them back. Um, be helpful to the media and resourceful as possible. That's how you make friends. And last month, um, I mentioned not to include bio of company executives. Um, and I, I, I want to make sure I was understood. Um, there was a response that one uh, they said, well, they thought those bios were important. And I want to make that I say, don't include bios of company executives, company executives that will not or are not available to talk to the media or are not open for interviews because that will only frustrate the media. So I'm sorry if that caused any um but let's do be careful about um, making people available if they're really not going to be available. I don't want to go to um, run out of time, so I'm going to briefly go over um, an addition to media, you can attend media briefings, and uh, like Business Wire has luncheons, uh, public relations agencies and these business relations vendors and news services will host a how to get to know media, like a breakfast, lunch, or a happy hour. And these are designed to allow um, companies the opportunity to meet reporters with whom they deal on a daily basis. I totally recommend attending those. I'm a member of the local Public Relations Society of America chapter, and um, I absolutely attend those luncheons when they have media come in and speak on panels. And then you might consider this would be an opportunity for one of your executives or someone at your company to be a source um, on that panel or to be a presenter on that panel. So this is another way when you get to know the media uh, then you can even maybe get someone on your company to be a part of one of these uh, media briefings. So as I said, make sure you get a feel for your the media you're pick, pitch. You need to be reading newspapers, listening to the radio station, watching TV. We mentioned before taking media to lunch, and don't pitch them. Just make it something that you're comfortable with. Offer to pay for the drinks or the meals, but you know you understand that the media never wants to look at anything that would like it resembles a gift, and we want to keep everything fifty dollars or below. And then pr participate in media-related events, and we'll talk about events next month and public behind events and how that builds awareness of your company and its brand. But um, media will sponsor non profit events like races, food drives, or something for a cause. And that might be a very good opportunity for you as publishers to partner with those media, with those um, broadcast media, be a co-part, a co-sponsor. And again, that will build your bond with those reporters, editors, and producers. And so will get you coverage about your company. Okay. Now, distributing your news uh, to the media. How do you get to the media? And let's just talk about this quickly, okay? Distributing your news, mail, fax, or email. Well, um, even practitioners have different views on best ways to distribute your news to the media, and I certainly know that some of you editors are very particular how you'd like to be approached by uh, people that are pitching stories and story ideas and product releases. So the advantages and disadvantages to all the pro approaches that um, you're most likely to use more than one approach over the course of, of sustained publicity campaigns. Uh, be that fax publicity material was considered newsroom junk mail, but it's interesting because now um, not only are we at McGuckin PR, uh, and we're going to be reaching out to people uh, by email, of course, because that is the prime way, but TV and radio outlets are very open to receiving faxes again, and those go into those daily folders, and we know that people are seeing those, and hopefully they find it newsworthy so that when they go in their story meetings um, and coverage, uh, their meetings, their morning meetings about what they're going to cover, that fax will be in there. Um, 
we, of course, use emails primarily. Uh, we don't attach our emails. We put them into the body of an email. Uh, we certainly offer if the media responds and they want more information and they're open to an attachment, we certainly will send more information as an attachment. But many media outlets fear viruses. So you just want to copy-paste your information to the body of an email. And, of course, you want your um, very important subject line grabs their attention. Of course, you never want to send a mass uh, email uh, to a amount of journalists. And these days, we've, there's specific services that we use that are called, that we use a service called My Emma, and there are many that will broadcast your um, press information, your press releases, individually specialized. Will embed the digital art and make it look like a very professional uh, presentation. So I think that's uh, very important that you don't. Um, that you decide how you're going to broadcast it. For years, we sent individual emails, and now we use this service, myemma.com. It's been very effective, and we get feedback from the media that they like that look. It doesn't feel like they're being with a bunch like everyone else, and they like the way it comes across, and it does link back to our um, our website if they're not able to read it uh, through our my Emma press release, they will go back to a link on a website where it will also be posted. Uh, of course, you can use, besides doing it yourself, you can distribute your news um, um, through an electronic distribution service. I've done that before we, um, when we were doing more hard copy mailing. And it's very uh, exciting because we could even just email now the names of the uh, uh, texts that would receive the, the email. And that's also what, uh, and then they can just drop your newsletter and distribute it for you and drop it in the mail. So securing coverage. So now let's say we've sent it by mail, fax, or email, mine being the preferred email. So let's do that very quickly, and then I want to show you some other examples to follow. Uh, since we must use email and most reporters have access to email, let's just go over a few hints that, will, that, we, that we know will help us in securing coverage. Clearly state the name of the project or your organization's name in your subject header. And really, don't get creative or clever here. Make it really precise what you're sending in that subject line. Make sure your press release is not formatted so that there's a bunch of bold center text bullets. As often lost or altered by the time it reaches your recipient, send the release in the body of an email, like I said earlier. Um, can project uh, problems and might even uh, create a contact, which would be terrible. And then, of course, there's these newswire services that I mentioned. And um, you can. I know we talked about. Um, I know one of the responses was last month. Oh, you need to have the press kits size more. And if it's not a huge cost to your company, absolutely. Uh, and also, if you want something to stand out and you're sending over, uh, if you're remodeling something, you can send your information in a clean, empty paint can. I don't know if you're open or not. Or if it's a toy drive, you might include a, to a tiny toy with your material that will remind the media um, that about a toy drive. And then it's very important to, to create a media vault um, so that on a, a page on your organization's website, your company's website, so that the media can access current and past media material. And this section site can also house logos, photos, and other artwork 
that the Mead can download for a graphic example, a graphic element to your story. And um, very much like we talked about, electronic press kit. And I want to, do, I want to go forward here. Okay. Let's go real quick, and then I'm going to show you a, an example of, electron, of an electronic press kit. Other things to do to know when you get started, be aware of lines. Magazines can be as much as six months out. Television to get that prime booking can be four to six weeks uh, as far as booking a, a guest. Advisories for television news service can even be as close as two days from your event. Daily newspapers can be three to three weeks. Um, listings and weeklies can be three to four weeks. Consider timing your uh, consider the timing of your news. Can it be held for the weekend? Um, remember, the Sunday newspaper has the highest circulation, so that'd be a great place for your story to land. I recommend avoiding uh, sending your press releases on Mondays and Fridays because reporters are human. They want to take a long weekend. And many businesses dr distribute news on Monday and Friday, Fridays especially, if they want to uh, bury the story. Uh, this could get lost in the shuttle if you don't want it buried. And many, many, there's, many financial, there's many restrictions on financial uh, moving of financial information, which is usually on Monday, so you wouldn't want to send on a money, Monday. Um, consider the news value of what you're pitching. Will the mass audience really care about what you're announcing? It may be only best only for select media, which we've talked about. Determine the audience, which we've talked about, which is the most important thing. Uh, and then newsworthy. And let's talk about what makes it newsworthy. Again, is your story unique? Is it single? And of course, is your story visual? And you're in the print business, but when you think about the TV, let's think about what would make it visual for them. Uh, it would be someone uh, speaking. Maybe it would be children and animals at the event. Maybe it would be the finish line of a, a, ra a, a race. So the newspapers and the television media will want to know that there will be a lot of visuals, and you want to make sure you convey that when you um, send out your information to the media outlets. Make sure that they know, they know there will be great visuals. Now, before we go on, and we're running out of time, I just want to go quickly about calling the media. And I know there was a question last time. And just quickly, of course, there's more to secure coverage than sending the press release. Once the media has the information, they most likely will still need encouragement to actually read the information and act upon it. So quickly, following up with media via phone, similar to making a cold call, sales cold call. It takes practice and lots and lots of practice. And here's just a few pieces of advice I wanted to share with you. Before you make the call, think about the three main things you want them to get out of your conversation besides your contact information. Try to anticipate the media's question. I know your editors make these calls all the time. So if you're calling media, remember that the media may not have an opportunity to review your information may not have reviewed it, so anticipate questions that are already answered in your material you've provided as well. About 90% of your calls will probably lead to voicemail, so keep your message brief, speak clearly, and get to the point immediately. Don't forget to say who you are, who you represent, how to reach you, and why you're calling. And I always say that up front that at the front so they don't have to listen to a long message. If I've gone too long, my contact information will be the first thing they hear when they review, replay the message or when they hear it the first time. And when you're calling, it's not to find out when media is interested in a story. It's to find out if the media is interested in a story. Call, explain why you think it will be of interest to them and their readers, viewers, and listeners. The big why. And 
try to make your follow-up phone calls in the late morning. Let them have time to have their coffee and donut. And in the afternoon, many reporters are on deadline, so that wouldn't be a good time to call. Practice ahead. Your voice message is ahead. When you reach reporters and they ask you to resend the information, and they will, send the follow-up information with a note attached per your request. And I can't tell you how many times for a CD review to one of the main rock writers in Texas, we may have to service him three times with the same album and information before he'll finally find the copy and open it and listen to it, just because he has so many uh, incoming. This is, I think we had an editor that commented about not interest in phone calls, but uh, note that re reporters receive several calls from people like um, publicists or someone representing your company daily. Some are friendly and receptive to a phone pitch, and others may impa be impatient due to so many calls and pending deadlines. Whatever response is on the other side, rest sure you've done your work and move on to the next call and I certainly don't burn any bridges. Um, so understand that they're very busy. Uh, be polite always. Remember that you're not asking when they're going to run your information, just if they have any interest, if they received it, and would they like more information. Let's look at an example now. Of a, and this is taken from Sonic Bids, and we had someone that wanted to see an example of a electronic press kit. And um, this is a page save for the Marshall Ford Swing Band. And on the left side, there's a copy of a digital of the band's new album, taught its genre. Uh, it's where it's from. That would be a direct contact email. And then it talks about what the band is um, about, it gives a brief bio blurb. And then each page within this electronic press kit would have a uh, would give information. So under bio, we have that would be a standalone page. That would be the artist information. And you might notice right above the buttons bio, auto, audio, video, photo, list, requirements, calendar. Oh, press set list, press calendar. Uh, there is also a player so people can hear the music. Okay, now this is page two of an example of an electronic press kit. This would be the audio page. So um, for your company, you would want to, um, maybe audio wouldn't be appropriate, so that wouldn't be a part of your press kit, your EPK. We're talking about e electronic press kits. Uh, but for a band, that would be important. Uh, I'd not include a video because this band didn't have one, but a video page could be also part of your electronic electronic press kit. Next one. Uh, this would be our photo gallery, and we've got one photo here. And on Sonic Bids, they give a band the option of five photos, and there's also an option to download a high res of any of those. So press reviews that this band's done, and again for your company. You could do. Uh, you could also on your web of information. You could have your own on your website. You could have all this information there as your own online EPK. For so you, would have one part of it for your press reviews. The list for a band would be what they play for a, your magazines. It could be other areas or another button that you would want to provide basic requirements I'm sorry uh, we didn't put on here and the calendar we didn't include you could have any of these buttons would be uh, part of an electronic press kit that you could easily um, create and I'm glad to um, offer you a link to an active uh, to this uh, electronic press kit as an active uh, link so you could go online to sonic bids and see how that works um, and then I also invite you to go uh, to McGuckinPR.com, and you can go to different pages of our clients, and you'll be able to see our online electronic press kits, more or less. Um, that is the overview that I, I wanted to present to you today. 
about development and maintenance of media targets and lists. And I'm sure you must have questions. Uh, thank you for your time. I'm sorry we've run over a little. Yeah, um, yeah. I uh, yeah, we had a we had some questions, but we are going to be getting cut off here by the uh, by the WebEx here. Um, you answered actually a lot of the questions that were coming in, but there, there's one that I uh, – if we can just real quick, though, like really quick, like 30, 60 seconds or so. Uh, media briefings, how do you know when these will be? Oh, you need to uh, – oh, John, are they – am I um, – I can just answer this. Yes, you would know a media, when a media briefing – you would need to join – uh, research what resources you have in your area. Um, BizWire um, charges nothing. You'd have to pay to attend that event, but it charges nothing to be a member. PR Wire, they don't charge now uh, because so many people can send them without over the, their own emails. But you would go and find these different entities. Uh, either for me, I, the PR Society. Uh, of America has the Austin chapter. You could read and get on their mailing list. So you to receive information about when they are, there's going to be a media briefing or an event to meet these reporters. So it's um, do your research and look for business wire, PR wire, any of these um, local. There's an organization here, Women in Communications, and you can join that. Even though I uh, w Women in Communications which is mostly broadcast uh, host, producers, station managers, news directors, assignment editors. They allow anyone to join those. So, yes, you need to research what is in your area as far as these different outlets that um, actually organize these media briefings. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, we, we just run over, so they're, they're going to be cutting us off here. But you, um, I think you covered a lot of the questions that were coming in anyways about, you know, special tricks to get to the right people. Um, yeah, oh, it's we, just, we, uh, go ahead. To get to the right people, we all know uh, the, the biggest element that's going to appeal to these people is that you have a strong why you're contacting them. So I just trust that we're developing your uh, PR material that you'll have that strong why, and that, that will be the way that you're going to be able to get to them, absolutely. Okay. okay. Well, thank you very much, Joe. That was very, very, very informative. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of us will be able to start getting, uh, you know, more free coverage, which is always nice. <laughs> yeah, so editorials is what we're going for, and, and, and I want to tell everyone, you must realize everything's happening so quickly for radio and and television, and they are so hungry for content that with your different publications and establishing a relationship with the different uh, assignment desks, producers, news directors, and that relationship to offer as a source, people from your company as a source for information, a source for interview, as an expert, they are hungry for that information. It's a great way to build a bond. And next month we'll also talk about events, and that will be another way to get to know the media better uh, through your having events. So we'll talk about that in um, August also. All right. Well, thank you very much, Joe, uh, jo, and I appreciate everyone attending, and uh, we'll be sending you the recording here uh, by tomorrow. Thank, thank you very much. Everyone, everyone have, a have a great summer, and thank you all for your interest. All right. Bye-bye.